Okay. All right, uh, Ms. Messiah, for the judicial economy, if you will, uh, since your client also has a petition, uh, and you know, I, I would urge you to kind of combine your cross examination for both cases as well. If, if and, unless we're going to go back and start all over again with you presenting your client first and I, I'll leave that to you, but I, I would appreciate it if it can be done in a condensed fashion. I understand your honor. All right, you may go ahead. Thank you, your honor. And I, I will try to combine them. All right, Mr. Shulman, you had mentioned that you and Ms. Um, Cully were in a relationship for roughly 10 months? Uh, approximately, yes. And you alleged that you saw the use of nitrous in December of 2022. December Correct? 25th, it was Christmas, yes. The Christmas 2025th. So no evidence of any drug use from August until December. Depends on what you mean by drug use. Uh, she was you hospitalized see, twice. You didn't see any evidence of these alleged, um, these capsules that you said she was utilizing. You didn't see any ev evidence of it from August to December. That is correct, yes. Okay. And so when you discovered that, you said you found several hundred and then several thousands, right? Correct. Did you count these nitrous? There were too many to count. So you're speculating that it was several hundred than several thousand? No, I observed it with my own eyes. It's not speculation. They were there in my house. But you did not count them. So you're- I took, uh, no, I didn't count. I took pictures. Okay. And so you said- And video. I took pictures and video because I figured were, that would be more representative than, than counting them up by hand. And they were throughout your house, you say? They were hidden inside furniture, inside dressers, um, desks inside boxes, purses, uh, and suitcases. There were two suitcases that were actually built for them. Throughout your house? Correct. Uh, specifically in two specific rooms in the house. And so how soon did you allow Ms. Cully to move in after you first started dating? I believe it was about four months. Ms. Masai, am I allowed to uh, speak? Uh, yeah. Ms. Colley, please listen to your attorney. This is not your turn to speak. Yes, Your Honor. And so after four months, you allowed her to move in, and you didn't discover any nitrous canisoles until maybe seven or eight months later? No, that's incorrect. It was probably two and a half to three months until I found the, so we moved in in August, September until the end of December, um, about three months. Okay, so the two, I'm sorry, three, four months, you didn't discover any of these hundreds or thousands of nitrous capsules. No, so it's a five bedroom, three story, 4,500 square foot house. Um, I had allotted two rooms for Ms. Colley, one in the basement that she worked out of when she worked from home, and the other was a guest bedroom that had all of her furniture from her previous residence. Those were two rooms that I rarely, if ever, went into, um, and those were where she would do the nitrous oxide and, and conceal the remnants. And how do you know she was doing nitrous oxide there? Uh, I guess that would be speculative, but I found the empty canisters. So I caught her red-handed doing them on the 25th and then about two and a half weeks later. So it's it's kind of an inference at that point. Right. And you do nitrous oxide as well? Absolutely not. I've never done it in my entire life. Did not even know what it really was until I caught Miss Collie red-handed doing it um, on the 25th. And so that means that you knew that she was doing it and allowed her to continue to live in the home? No, that's the exact opposite of what I just said. 
Okay. And so I did you not said, know she was doing it. I, I did not know she was doing it. I learned on the 25th. And then I continued to allow her to live in the home contingent upon her going to counseling and therapy. Okay. And so did you file a dispository once you found out that she was allegedly using these nitrous can canisoles or capsules? I suppose that would have probably happened on the 28th if she hadn't attempted to commit suicide and gone to jail. I could appreciate that answer, but you did not file a dispository against Ms. Cully. No, judge, no dispository. Uh, judge, I'm going to have to object oh, here. Okay. Uh, Every, this is so much harder on Zoom. Uh, everybody talking over there's a delay or something, so or give it a little more delay before you start talking. What's your objection, Mr. D Mixon? So my objection is relevance, Judge. I, I don't know why we're going down a road of whether or not uh, Mr. Schulman filed the dispossessed reaction that, that has nothing to do with this case. All right, well, he's already answered that he did not, so it, it would appear. Yeah, that but just in terms of the line of questioning, Judge. Yeah. What's your reason for anything beyond the fact that he didn't file a dispossessory to keep asking questions in that regard? Your Honor, as he's presented, he was so concerned about his safety. He had mentioned that he had her to, um, he gave her notice to leave, gave her 60 day notice to leave, leave. He opened the door up to ask whether or not he filed a dispossessory. If he allegedly gave her 60 day notice, I want to know about the 60 day notice when he allegedly found this person using, you know, nitrous, you know, oxide in his home. What did okay, he do well, to get her out? Okay, well, let, let, like I said, I, I really like to hear chronology here. Mr. Shulman, what is the date that you told Ms. Cawley you'd give her 60 days or whatever to leave? That would have been on the, the 27th of January, 2023. Okay, so it was not on the December 25th, the 22nd date where you discovered all of the canisters and capsules. Correct, Your Honor. I, I, I allowed her to stay in the home because she had promised to get help. On the 26th, I learned that she was not honest about getting help. And it was at that time that I asked her to move out and gave her 60 days. Um, and then on the 27th, the very next day, is when some of the physical altercations occurred and when she okay. attempted suicide and then went to and was incarcerated. All right. Does that clar clarify anything for you, Ms. Messiah, as far as it's the it's timing? It's All right. It's let's let's so move on. You said that the reason why Ms. Cully mentioned not going to counseling is because she couldn't afford it, right? That is what she told me, yes. Do you offer to pay for it for her? No, at that point. I, w I was unwilling to pay for it because she'd lied to me. Okay, but you, but you stayed with her continuously because you once you allegedly found this nitrous because you loved her, but you did not offer to pay for counseling for her. When? When are you asking if I offered? Did, I mean, for that matter, did you offer when you found out when allegedly she wasn't going to the counseling after the, the 26th of January? Did you offer to pay? Yes, I even offered to attend therapy and counseling with her. Okay. You didn't mention that to this court in your testimony a moment I'm ago. I'm mentioning it now. Okay. You're mentioning it now. Okay. And so um, going to your, your petition, you mentioned um, violence or what you said was violence uh, against you that Ms. Uh, Cully allegedly punched you? Correct. Okay. And when was that that she allegedly punched you? January 27th, 2023. Okay. Were there, do you have any scars? Did you have any scars? No, I do not have any scars. Okay. Where did she, where did she allegedly punch you at? The chest. Okay. And so did you, you didn't look at your chest to see if there was any scars on the chest? Um, in, in her defense, it was while she was trying to commit suicide and I was trying to stop her. Um, and at that point in time, no, I, I did not look at my chest or remove my shirt. Um, and when the police officers arrived, again, the focus was on getting Lauren mental help, not, uh, actually I told the police officers explicitly, I didn't want to press charges because it was not my intent to hurt or harm Lauren in any way. So just so I'm clear, the, this was 
during the alleged suicide attempt. So she's, you're saying that she was allegedly trying to take pills and punching you in the chest? It's not an alleged suicide attempt. It definitely happened, but yes, that is, that is when this punch happened. And that was the same time that you admitted that you tried grabbing her and grabbing her wrist, correct? I did not try grabbing her. I, I grabbed her wrist to pull it away from her face and tried to take the pills out of her hand. Okay. And so also in your petition, you were asked to mention specifically how many, the dates, approximate dates of, you know, other acts of, as you mentioned, punching, um, punching you. You didn't mention any other time that she allegedly punched you, did you? I'm sorry, you, I don't understand your question. In your petition, your petition for family violence, you had stated that Miss Cully had actually punched you on the 27th, correct? And that's what you just gave us testimony about. Correct. Right? Also in that petition, it asks you to list other times that the respondent had committed these acts and approximate dates, but you did not list any other dates approximate times that Ms. Cully allegedly punched you, did you? That's the only time that I recall that she did actually punch me. Okay. And so it is incorrect to say that violence has happened multiple times with Ms. Cully attacking you multiple times. Judge, I'm going to have to object here. All right, go ahead, Mr. Vixen. Judge, um, counsel is, I, I guess, leading Mr. Schulman down a path here that isn't necessarily what he's testifying to you about. She's saying that he wrote down that there was multiple instances of violence, but only one time that he punched her, but they're, they're two different things. And so I, I'm not quite sure if counsel is inferring that a punch, that the only type of violence is a punch. I, I, I'm not quite sure where she's going with this. All right, Ms. Messiah. Where I'm going with it, Your Honor, is that based on the petition, he's, um, he was asked to provide when any alleged attacks, you know, physical altercations had taken place. Mr. Shulman did. He mentioned being punched. He's admitted that to this court. He was also asked to list other times that, you know, these particular instances had taken place. He failed to do so. However, in his testimony, and Mr. Um, Bixson had wrapped up the idea that these things happen multiple times. I'm trying to establish, was it this one time allegedly on the 27th? Was it multiple times? What was happening or did Ms. Um, Ms. Shulman actually physically um, attack or you know, put her hands on Mr. Shulman once, multiple times or not at all? That's what I'm trying to establish for the purposes of trying to you know, establish a permanent um, family violence TPO, Your Honor. If, if we were sitting in a courtroom, I would imagine uh, maybe I'm speculating here, but generally you would present that petition for the witness to look at and then cross-examine related to that. So is there a specific portion of the petition that you want to read back to the court and to the witness to examine him on? Otherwise, if you're talking about punch, he said punching only occurred one time. As you know, there are multiple forms of conduct or actions that people can take that qualify as family violence. They're not all punches. You, you're right, Your Honor. And so actually, um, petitioner, what's been listed as petitioner's exhibit E, and I'm for the purposes of presenting um, evidence, I don't have Mr. Shulman obviously in front of me. I shared uh, these exhibits with uh, Mr. Bixton. And so, um, I'm not certain if Mr. Shulman, well, Mr. Shulman, do you happen to have your petition in, in front of you for family violence? No, ma'am. Okay. And so, Your Honor, uh, and Mr. Bixton, are you able to share the same with your court? If not, then I'm going to ask if I could either um, share my screen, which has already been pre-marked as Petitioner's Exhibit E. Yeah, that, that's uh, by Petitioner, you mean in the second case or in the first case? Right. In the, in the first case. Well, in the sec I guess the second case, Your Honor. In your client's case. That is correct, Your Honor. Okay. So we got to get it from a different pile here because we're under the first case, <laughs> Mr. Shulman's case. 
Ms. Broom, can you reach Exhibit A in, in Ms. Cawley's case? A as an apple? It's, it's E is an Edward. E, I'm sorry. I said A. <laughs> Exhibit E. Which page, Ms. Messiah? If we can go to page two, Your Honor. And so, Mr. Shulman, at number five, can you read number five in your answer? At other times, respondent has committed other such acts, including but not limited to harassment. Respondent has changed her telephone number no less than 14 times to continue to call and text petitioner after prior numbers are blocked. Respondent further sent numerous unsolicited text messages to petitioner's mother. It's, uh, Judge, I, I'm going to object to this. Um, I, I, I re Relevance, uh, Section 5 has nothing to do with the line of questioning that counsel was evoking from Mr. Shulman. <laughs> Well, it, it, it may uh, show that her question receives a different answer than perhaps she thought. I, 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 we're, we're halfway through reading it, and uh, you know, let, let's get through this. And, and Ms. Messiah, you want to save it for argument. If you think there's a discrepancy, then you can argue it. After, I mean, it, as he said, there was only one incident of punching. This paragraph five starts out with harassment. It starts out with alleging multiple phone calls from multiple numbers. Those are all acts that every petitioner can list. I'm, I'm not sure where you're going with this. Where I'm going with it, Your Honor, is that it acts specific dates and time and details as it relates to the other um, at times when these other acts were committed. Okay. It says approximate dates, not specific dates. And, and then happened? it says then it says what happened. Uh, right. If you want to ask him what happened, I mean, he testified to a good bit of this on direct. You have the right to cross-examine him as to what he testified to related to these acts alleged in number five that he did already testify to. And Your Honor, and that's ahead. what I'm actually attempting to do. So the family violence, and again, this is not a, a stalking TPO for the record. This is a family violence. Ms. Messiah, I read the petitions. I've been doing this a long time and I'm fully aware of what kind of hearing we have here today. Mm -hmm. You don't have to coach me on what type of case I'm watching and listening to here. And it's not to coach you, Your Honor. It is more to make it clear as it relates to opposing counsel. If he's saying that he was punched, it acts specifically what the act is. Mr. Shulman said that he was punched. If he was punched, it asks him to list other times that these type of events happen. He's not done so. That is what's being elicited for him to admit that he's okay. He did. He did not. Uh, we've established that ten minutes ago that there was only one punch. That's all I've heard testimony on. What I did say is that there are other acts besides, if you want to use the criminal term, simple battery or battery. There are other acts that qualify under the family violence statute for the issuance of a family violence protective order. I have issued them when it didn't involve even one punch. This is not a st stalking is one of the acts that are alleged i mean they're not alleged one of the acts in the code under the family violence act agreed your honor okay uh, I, i'm I, i'm if, if you don't have something specific other than what we've already covered that there was only one punch and he wrote it up uh he may be an attorney but i'm assuming he did this pro se <clears throat> I, I, don't look, I don't look to the form as much as I do the substance of what's in these petitions. Yes, Your Honor. Where they're located on the petition. If we and did I'm, that, it would be very difficult. Judge, if I may, just to oh, clear. This, okay, go yeah. ahead, Mr. Bixon. I, just, just to clear this whole thing up, we're looking at Section 5. I think we should look at Section 4, which enumerates some of the physical acts of violence yeah. that Mr. Shulman suffered. And I don't know, because... Again, opposing counsel had brought up that it was just that one, but he writes in section four, the other instances, or at least some of them. Section five just are additional instances of suffering that Miss Colley had allegedly put him okay. through, but section four specifically states 
what we were just talking about. I think at the I think the very first line of section four. Yes, Judge. And, and I thought uh, I had just all right. What what Ms. Messiah? And so I thought I was crossing this this witness, like literally, I'm just going through as I took notes, I'm just going through the testimony, Your Honor. So I'm not introducing anything new. I'm going through what they have introduced. And just because Mr. Bixson isn't sort of liking the question that's being answered, asking the relevance, even as it relates to punch. And we know punch as everything else you've mentioned, Your Honor, does matter. I'm well, just it, it also mentions grappling with in paragraph four. Okay, so there, there's two descriptions of physical contact listed in number four. Okay, there are none listed in number five. I get your point. I understand that. I'm going to sustain the objection. You can argue it. You, you've made your point that it was not, that other acts of physical violence were not listed in paragraph five. Now let's move on. Mr. Um, Schumann, did you, you didn't file a TPO on January 26th, correct? No, my TPO was filed on the 6th of February. And you mentioned, again, back to this alleged um, drug uh, attempt at suicide. You you mentioned Ms. Cully was arrested, right? Correct. She was taken into custody. On a traffic. And you said at FTA was for a traffic. For a failure to appear. I don't know what the underlying issue there was. Okay. And so they didn't ever find drugs in Ms. Cully's system, right? No, they found them on the floor um, and on the bed. Not okay, the I, I'm sorry, if I, I want to make sure I understand the answer. The police observed those? Correct, Your Honor. And I, I also took pictures as well. Okay. So the police observed them, the, the, the police arrest her or yourself for drug possession? Um, to my knowledge, the, the drugs weren't illegally possessed. They were prescription. Okay. And so back to well, that. Judge, I, I, just to clarify, are you mentioning the nitrous or are you mentioning the pills on the ground? I, I'm sorry, is Mr. Bixon, are you, con I'm sorry, Mr. Shulman, are you confused as to what I'm talking about when I say drugs in Ms. Cully's system, do they find the drugs in her system for this alleged overdose? Because you said in, she- In her system, uh, how would he know that? Well, again, he would know that because he seems to have all of these other details in terms of how she's allegedly huffing and- the, the there, there was no testimony that there was a drug test administered. In fact, how, there how was no this. I, I asked him. Did, I asked him if the police saw the pills that she was allegedly taking in a suicide attempt. Did the police actually see those? And he said yes. Mm -hmm. And then you immediately asked if anybody was arrested for drug possession, mm -hmm. and he responded, "No." Or maybe Mr. Mixon was uh, Mr. Bixon. I apologize. Um, responded that. As to which incident are you talking about? And Mr. Shulman testified that these were legally prescribed drugs, as I understand. Is that correct, Mr. Shulman? Uh, yes, Your Honor. They were they were in prescription, prescription meds, not the nitrous oxide. Right. So to the point, Your Honor, Mr. Bixon did interject and ask that not Mr. Shulman. If Mr. Shulman was confused didn't understand something, again, with him being a capable attorney, I would think he would ask for further clarification, but you, I was interrupted and Mr. Bix, uh, Mr. Shulman started to speak and Mr. Bixon did interject. Right. Try your question again and let's see if I understand it. For the purposes of really trying to just, and seeing where this is going, just trying to move this along even more. 
Uh, right. Mr. You're, you're allowed a thorough and sifting cross-examination, but I want to, I don't want to leave it in a state of confusion. If you want to re-ask your question, restate it, please go ahead. Right. Your Honor, there is so much more meat and you know to this, and again, in the interest of being able to okay. focus, because we keep right. getting you know going down these rabbit holes instead of just focusing on the I think sort of the majors um, again, mm -hmm. we're just trying to address you know okay. the testimony in chief. But um, Mr. Co uh, Mr. Um, Shulman, you continue to have sex with Miss Coley during this time up until she was, I guess removed from your home on, the, on what date on what date was she removed which one are you talking about so uh, on february 5th so up until february 5th you continue to have sex with miss colleen that's actually incorrect no we did not to the best of my recollection we did not have sex really uh through december i I would say probably the last time we had sex was the beginning of December or, or November. You, you didn't file February 2nd through 4th. You mentioned there were a lot of issues going on between, between the two of you, even February um, 3rd. You didn't file an ex parte, a, a TPL, did you? You didn't file a TPL during that time. Uh, I filed it on the 6th. You did not file a TPO. February 2nd, February 3rd, or February 4th. Right? I didn't even know the procedure or process for following the TPO until the 5th when I realized that I needed one as soon as humanly possible. And that was on a Sunday. And I filed one literally on Monday as soon as I could. And Mr. Shulman, to speed things up, if you'll answer the yes or no question with a yes or a no first, you know the drill. Yes, and sir. Then you can explain your answer instead of okay. explaining first. I apologize, Your Honor. February 2nd, February 3rd, February 4th, you did not file a TPO or 5th. You didn't file a TPO against Ms. Ms. Culley. No. You filed a TPO on the 6th, which is the same day Ms. Culley filed a TPO as well, right? Yes. You mentioned the out-of-state numbers um, that Ms. Polly has called you from several out-of-state numbers. Yes. How did you come to believe that these these numbers, you don't have any anything substantial that says Ms. Culley or any proof that Ms. Culley was the one calling from these out-of-state numbers, all of these numbers, do you? Incorrect. She would call, and I recognize her voice, and obviously through the interaction, and then the same number that I would speak to her on would then send text messages. So, no, I would say that's incorrect. I, I know definitively it was her. And you didn't tell her not to call you anymore? Right? Again, incorrect. I repeatedly told her to stop calling me. I think it stands for reason when you block someone's number, your desire is to get them to stop calling you. You were texting Miss Cully as well during this time, right? I did occasionally respond yes yeah. and so you also mentioned you offered to pay for an airbnb for miss cully to leave right correct all right and that she should take her things and leave right that was what i wanted yes don't you still have miss cully's belongings now i don't have them they're at the house where i've left them untouched pursuant to the order and you've never tried to coordinate Ms. Cully getting her belongings? No, that's not my, I'm not allowed to contact her. You've never contacted a sheriff or anyone regarding Ms. Cully getting her belongings? No, I, that's not how that works from my understanding. Okay. So February 5th, Ms. Cully left the apartment voluntarily, right? No. So, okay. So you mentioned that at 6 a.m. the Brookhaven police knocked at the door with Miss Cully, right? Yes. So how did Miss Cully come to leave the house before returning with the Brookhaven police? She left the morning of the 2nd. 
Okay. And she left voluntarily because there was no TPO at this point. Yes. Okay. And you said you let her, Miss Cully, um, back in on the second because the police threatened you with trespassing. The fifth. Uh, the fifth. I'm well. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, the fifth, because the police threatened you with trespassing. Yes. And did you ask for any, you didn't ask for any chief or any sergeant? No. You didn't contact your attorney to ask questions about that idea? I didn't have an attorney. Okay. And so you, did you, you didn't call a partner or anybody to ask about that? It was six at the morning, six in the morning. Um, so no, I did not call anyone. But you testified that you feared something would happen if you didn't let her in. So you didn't call anyone else to, to make sure that that was right before letting her back in, despite your fears. Yes, the police were already there and that's probably who I would have called. Okay. And so then you mentioned things began to escalate. You didn't call the police back at that point. No, I went and locked myself in my room. Okay. And you never, you didn't just leave the house either? No, I did not leave my own house at that point. Okay. So you mentioned to the court that you were, um, you don't understand why Ms. Cully would be concerned in terms of being armed um, and, and dangerous and that she lied about you being armed and dangerous. I'd like to present what's been pre-marked as petitioner's exhibit C. And that was from Ms. Colley's case, correct? It is, Your Honor. But when I, I we got the two cases and two petitioners, but please specify which case you filed under. Yes, Your Honor. When I filed, I actually put both um, case numbers on there, Your Honor. Okay. Um, they were interconnected. I'm sorry, you said that was what letter or number? Letter C. Petitioner C? Yes. Okay. And if we could um, scroll down. And Mr. Shulman, can you tell me what we're looking at here? In which picture? Um, in the first picture and the second, well, we can just go picture by picture then. First picture. First picture, um, it looks like multiple disassembled airsoft weapons. Okay. And um, oh, oh, I, 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 if you want more specific, just let me know. But yeah, those are airsoft rifles. Um, this is my range bag with, I believe, two unloaded, um, one with the firing pin removed pistols. Okay. The third page. Oh, that you could faintly see that. What, it, what is the third page um, of Mr. Shulman? It's very blurry, but it, it looks like an airsoft rifle, which is kind of like a BB gun. Right. And, and the fourth page. That is a paintball gun, and you can definitively see at the stock the, the air tank. That is not a gun. Okay. So you recognize what's in these pictures, correct? I do. It's my property. Um, and of those pictures, you, you showed two real guns, uh, two pistols, both of them nine millimeter. Can we go back to the first page, please? And these are true, accurate depiction of your guns, Mr. Shulman? No, as I just said, they're not guns. Those are airsoft toys. Okay, and so- they're replicas. I mean, they look, they look like guns, but okay. no, those are, none, of, none of those are real in that so picture. The first two pictures are guns. You just represent no. the first Only two- Only the second picture is actual guns. Okay, so now it's your testimony that the first picture isn't a gun, aren't guns, but the second picture are guns. Is that correct? My testimony has been consistent. The second picture shows two handguns. 
The other three show replica airsoft guns that are fake. And these are your guns, are they not, Mr. Shulman? So the two pistols and number two were in a basement in storage. Um, they were the only guns that I did not have locked in a safe. Okay. I, please, please listen. To yes, the yes, yes. The, the, those are those are two pistols. Yeah, absolutely. Use your guns. The question was, are they your guns? Yes, they are. Thank you. I'd like to enter um, in his what has been pre-marked as petitioner's exhibit. Um, what is that? We're at C now, I believe. I believe this is C, isn't it? Yes, yes, Your Honor. I, I'd, I'd like to enter in. Um, Mr. Bixon has had an opportunity to to view. Oh, this okay. Screen. Any any objection? I, when you said I, that, I, I thought you were getting ready to pull up another exhibit. Yeah, Judge, uh, I would I, object. I would, I would object to it on relevancy. I, I don't. I don't know how airsoft guns are relevant to this case, especially when there's been no allegations of any type of violence on Mr. Schulman's part in, with a firearm. Okay. So, well, I. I'm, I'm going to overrule the objection just because guns have been mentioned. They're in here. Y'all can argue that in closing. Yes, Judge. All right. They're admitted over objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Shulman, Ms. Cully has not contacted you since um, receiving notice of um, the TPL, right? She has not contacted me since February 8th when the, the Sheriff's Department removed her from my home. So I, I don't know when she learned of it, but it was served on the 8th. And that was the last time I, I saw her. So you said that it was served on the 8th. So since she was served, she's not contacted you? No. Okay. And she has not threatened to hurt you, to commit any violence, to harm you, correct? What what period? Uh, please clarify that for the court. Yes, Your Honor. And and so on on February 6th, for instance, when you swear out the TPO, did Miss Cully didn't threaten to to hurt you, to punch you, to kill you, to do anything to create any physical harm to yourself or person then? I would dispute the, the character to that. She continued to contact me and continued to, to spread lies about my conduct that, that put me in direct danger. Okay. And so, Mr. Shulman, you mentioned lies and on a, um, a neighborhood post. Can we um, reference what has been and, and pull up what has been pre-marked as petitioner's exhibit B? Mr. Shulman, can you tell me what you see on the screen, please? Can you please scroll down to show me the entire exhibit? Uh, yeah. There appears to be some lettering at the bottom that I don't recognize. Okay. Outside of the lettering at the bottom, do you recognize the rest of what's presented as exhibit B? As it as it presents on the screen right now, do you recognize that? Yeah, this was sent to me um, by the the head of the the neighborhood, uh, the homeowners association, um, as a post that had been posted on the the neighborhood Facebook group. So this is the Facebook post that you mentioned that was spreading lies. One of yes. Okay, is this a true and accurate depiction of that post that was sent to you? Yes, this is the post that that I believe was posted by Lauren. Your Honor, Mr. Um, Bixton, as we all had an opportunity to review this post, I'd like to enter it um, as plaintiff's exhibit, I'm sorry, I guess in this case it's respondents, it'd be re respondents B, um, exhibit B. Any objection, Mr. Bixton? No objection. All right, admitted without objection. Mr. Uh, Schumann, can you tell me where in this post Ms. Cully is threatening you? 
He is armed and left the house. I am terrified alone and seeking advice of counsel. I'm incredibly fearful of my safety. Okay. And so where in that did you feel threatened where she was threatening to, to harm, where she was threatening you, Mr. Shulman? What, what, what about this threatened you, just so that we'll understand, because you mentioned the post, where? I, I, absolutely. I'm happy to explain. So it is basically threat by proxy, and it's something that I've personally witnessed her do um, and personally witnessed it in a form of Ms. Weaver, who she invited to my home. Um, Basically, it's, it's the recruitment of acolytes um, that are being told that I'm dangerous, uh, this, this horrible individual, that I'm armed, um, and basically creating a, a culture of fear and danger around me that would then cause people to, to respond in kind. Um, it, it was most evident when there was literally a person in my home prepared to, to shoot me if I entered. Um, and it was by extension of this post extended to the neighborhood um, to where literally people were, were reporting my location and, and so on and so forth because I was being perceived as an active threat or danger, which being perceived as an active threat or danger when it is not true can absolutely create a dangerous situation where, where my well-being is at risk. Mr. Shulman, she doesn't even mention your name in the post, does she? No, my name is not in that post. Okay. So... Since Ms. Cully's been served with this TPO, she's not contacted you, right? No. She has not threatened you, right? To the best of my knowledge, she has complied with the court order and not committed aggravated stalking. Yes. No further questions, Your Honor. Any redirect, Mr. Bixson? Yes, Judge. Very brief. <clears throat> Um, Judge, uh, we have listed as P9, uh, that's nitrous abuse pictures. If we could pull that up. Okay. Your P9. Yes, Judge. <laughs> it gets confusing when we got two petitioners, two, two respondents, and they're the same people. Mr. Shulman, do you see the picture on the screen? I do. Okay. Do you recognize that picture? I do. Can you tell can you tell the court what that picture is of? One of the pictures that I took, this is one from the the guest bedroom um cache of the pills that uh this is actually after I removed it from the, the nightstand, I believe. Were those the same type of canisters that you saw Miss Collie take? Yeah, um, these are the same things that she was that I caught her using on the 25th of December. Okay, and but if we could go, excuse me, Mr. Bixon, just so I can understand. As I said, I don't, I'm not familiar with this nitrous oxide. When you call them canisters, are they in fact capsules or? or I, I always look at it. I as think like of a canister as something metallic or. It, I believe they are. They're small pressurized canisters, Judge. Oh. Um, they're like CO2 canisters. Yeah, like the same thing you would put in like a, a butane torch or something like that. The same design. Okay, shape. But they're roughly the size of a typical capsule. Or um, they're a little bit larger. Yeah, Mr. It's Shulman, hard to get perspective. Uh, from uh, approximately how, how many inches long do you think they are? Okay. Okay. Three and a half to four inches. Okay. Four. Inch and a half or so? Something like that. Area. Okay. So I'm, I'm not a capsule that's that swallowed. Now, uh, Mr. Shulman, did you take this picture? I did. Okay. And if the court could go to image number two. Okay. Are those the same capsules? Uh, that's uh, basically a redundancy of the of the first picture. It's the same. Okay. The and cache. if we could go to the third one. Do you recognize this photo? Yes. Okay. And what's this photo of? Uh, another picture of what I found in my home. This was in a suitcase i don't recall if it was in storage in the basement or in the guest bedroom but this is one of the ways that they were hidden in the house okay and if the image number four please and can you identify this for the court that is a box that was in my basement um it's a the same capsules but apparently a different manufacturer that distributes them okay and, and judge i know that there's obviously a number of images for 
brevity's sake, uh, I'm just going to leave this where it is because I think we're getting the idea here. Um, okay. Now, Mr. Schulman, I know that the issue of um, firearms has been raised. Um, what instance did you did you threaten Miss Colley with a firearm? Never threatened anyone with a firearm before. No acts of violence with it whatsoever. Never. That's all I have, Judge. Thank you. All right, any recross? Oh, Miss Masai, uh, you're you're on. Miss, you're you're on mute, Miss Masai. My apologies. If we that's could, okay, I've done it many times. <laughs> we could put that exhibit uh, back up. Um, I think it was petitioners. I'm not certain which. It was this petitioners my... nine, I believe. Yes, Judge. Uh, it was labeled as nitrous abuse pictures. And have you tendered it or? Yes, Judge. Actually, and I apologize about that. Just a matter of housekeeping, Judge. We would ask that that <clears throat> that, that exhibit be tendered into evidence. Any objection, Miss Masai? Um, I, I want to, if we could, Your Honor, just scroll down to see the last. Yeah, just, Ms. Broom, if you'll just scroll each each one, just click on them and move to the next. Okay. Okay, that appears to be it. Any objection? Yeah, my, my, my objection would be, I mean, when was this? I mean, we don't have, I think there needs to be more foundation. Some, I mean, I could ask it on, you know, recross, but um, there's some questions I have here. So yes, we don't know when this was taken. Uh, Mr. Bixon, do you want to examine your client? Well, Judge, I mean, it's up to the court. I mean, if she wants to ask it through cross or have me ask okay. it on direct accomplishes well, the same. Well, I, I was just getting to the point of get, getting it tendered into evidence. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll ask, when was this taken? That seems to be the issue. Um, you, you, I know you testified earlier about taking pictures, but what was the yeah, date? So the the ones that are blue, the blue canisters, those are all taken on the 26th, the day after I first uh, was. 26th uh, of? I'm sorry, uh, of December, the day, the day after um, I first determined okay. that there was an issue. Um, and then the white ones, uh, the ones from the basement were taken um, on, I believe, the 8th or 9th. That, that would have been after... Um, 8th or 9th of what month? Sorry, I keep doing it. Um, of February, um, after, after the TRO was served and I was back in my home. All right, anything else on that, Ms. Messiah? Yes, Your Honor. So, uh, Mr. Shulman, you said you found some of these canisters in the night okay. state. Please, before we proceed, uh, are there any? Is there any objection to the tendering of P nine? No, Your Honor. Okay, admitted without objection. Now, please move on. You can you certainly cross examine him regarding it. So, Mr. Shulman, um, you mentioned that you found some of these in the nightstand. I believe picture number nine uh, is actually a picture of the nightstand. Okay. And is your testimony that you didn't see these canisters? Well, I, I'm sorry, I'm a little confused, so you've got to help me. So you found the blue canisters on the 26th of December? Some of them, yes. Some of them were found on the 25th, but yes. Okay, or 25th. Are you able to, and the rest were found after Ms. Shulmanette left, I mean, Ms. Uh, Colliette left? So there were two rooms that were principally. Start used. with a yes or no, please. Oh, I'm sorry. What was what was the question? It was. So you, and, and I'm sorry to be clear. You you knew the blue canisters were there as of December 26. You knew those canisters were there. Correct. And you found the white canisters on February 8th or 9th after Miss Cully had left. No, I found the white canisters also on the 26th. I did not take pictures of them until later. And so, uh, Your Honor, then we, we got to go back because, all right, so just to be clear, when you said you took pictures on the 26th, you did not take pictures on the 26th. These pictures are from the 8th or 9th. Some of them, yes. 
Okay. I, I don't want to belabor this point, but I'm trying to understand here. I'm a little confused at this point. You said the blue canisters you saw on the 26, but you did not take pictures, right? No, the opposite of that. So you found these blue canisters on the 8th or 9th, and you took pictures on the 8th and 9th when you found them? No. On the 26th, I found all of them. I went around the house. I checked all of the rooms where I thought they could be. I found them. I started in the guest bedroom, which is where the blue canisters predominantly were. And as I found them, I took pictures. I then went and checked the basement, which is where the white canisters and some blue canisters were predominantly. But at that point, I had stopped taking pictures. And so I did not take pictures of the basement canisters, which were predominantly the white ones. I went right. back and took those pictures later. Um, when I was gathering evidence for purposes of this hearing. All right, and just to surmise things, you saw some blue, some white canisters, or you found and located these on the 26th, but you didn't take pictures until, some pictures, until February 8th or 9th? Yes, I think that's a fair summary. Okay. And Ms. Cully wasn't there when you took those pictures, right? I don't recall where she was. On which date? On, on 8th or February 8th or 9th, because he testified either 8th or 9th. He doesn't, he didn't say specifically 8th or 9th. And so or that's why I said the 8th or 9th, Ms. Cully was not there at the home when you took these pictures. On the 8th or 9th, correct. She was not there. Okay. And there was somebody else that was th there with you when you took those pictures? Yes, my parents came over. Okay. And you allowed these canisters, at least from the 26th, to stay in your home? <coughs> sure. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Anything further from this witness? No, Judge. All right. Uh, do you intend to call another witness at this point? Um, not yes. on director than rebuttal, Judge. I I'm sorry? A possibly on rebuttal, but... Okay. Yeah, all right, let's 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 take uh, two or three minutes then before we uh, take up uh, Ms. Colley as witness. All right, I'm gonna take a brief break. Thank you, Judge. Uh, is there a time that I should like make sure I'm returned by, Judge? Um, maybe three or four minutes. Okay, <laughs> I'll okay. be back, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 